Are you guys ready for a 12 valve conversion on my 24 valve Cummins? Let's go. What's up guys, welcome back to another video on Pure Panorama. Right before we get into this video, I gotta send a huge thank you out to Gino's Garage because all the parts that I'm about to show you right now came from them. They got them out to me in such a speedy fashion and everything is complete. We should be able to get this job done here hopefully before nightfall is upon us. So again, huge thank you to Gino's Garage. If you guys haven't been to their website yet, I highly suggest going and checking that out. If you need anything for your Dodge truck, doesn't matter what year it is, they will have you covered. Anything from all your OEM parts, they do have some aftermarket stuff. They're not so much in the performance side of things, but they do have a ton of stuff, just OEM style stuff. If your dashboard is cracked and you need to replace your dash, they got you covered. If you need tools for doing certain specific jobs, they got you covered. They have a ton of things on their website and I highly highly recommend going on there and looking through everything you'll spend at least probably a couple hours going through it all and I guarantee you'll find something that you need for your truck so go check them out genosgarage.com and if you have any further questions that you need to know more about a product give them a call and they will get that answer for you and take care of you in this video we are doing a fuel filter delete on the 24 valve Cummins that is right we've got the parts right here in this box I got them in Friday I've been a little bit under the weather and really just focused on trying to get more done in the garage so that I could get the truck inside we've been getting rain all weekend so I was hoping to get enough done in there to where I could at least get the front end of the truck in there to do this job and get this video filmed and recorded for you guys so you could see what I was doing what my thoughts were and what parts I got to delete the fuel filter housing off my 2001 24 valve Cummins I have caught a break in the rain though and I don't think it's going to rain again uh, until later on after it's already dark so we're just gonna jump into it right here in the driveway but right now let's go ahead and show you the goods I'm just gonna dive right into it and show you what I'm talking about when I say I'm doing a 12 valve conversion on the 24 valve what I mean by that is I am doing a 12 valve fuel filter housing which is just a filter head basically and I believe this style filter head comes on like your 94 to 90 six trucks this is what we are going to do we are converting from the 24 valves stock factory fuel filter housing which you guys know i've been going back and forth with fighting for quite a while to get rid of leaks on it and they just keep coming back that fuel filter housing leaks from the drain valve leaks from the cap it leaks everywhere so i figured how could i go wrong if i were to just install a 12 valve filter head with a spin-on style filter and go that route basically going to be running the same style filter as what you would get if you installed a fast or an air dog lift pump or if you just got a standalone remote filter and mounted it onto your frame with a filter head it's the same concept only difference is it's going to go in the stock the factory filter location and we're going to run it there so here's the filter we got it is a fleet guard filter the part number is right there fs19 five one nine so that is the filter you can see the bottom has a big gaping hole in it that is for your water and fuel sensor here now this is the water and fuel sensor for a 12 valve so keep in mind this isn't going to just plug into your 24 valves water and fuel sensor so in order to make this work you're gonna have to do well there's a couple of options you would have to go ahead and snip this plug off and then use some type of like spade connector or something to crimp onto these and then do the same for the plug that's underneath the hood of your truck cut that one off and put the opposite whether it's the male or the female connector onto those wires so that you can still plug them in and unplug them for when you change your filter or you would have to go ahead and find the other end of this plug here and then just clip off the plug under the hood of your truck and get it all wired up to the other end of this plug so that you can plug and unplug them the easiest option would probably be just to cut this plug off cut your factory plug off underneath the hood 
and just use some little spade style connectors. Let me go grab some so you know what I'm talking about. For anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, I think that's what these are called, is like a spade style connector. I don't know, I'm, pro I'm probably wrong. I'm not up to date on my electrical connectors, but these are a water tight one. So when you plug the female end of this into this male end here, you get a good sealed connection. We have some of these sealing washers. They are to put on your banjo bolts and your fuel system to make sure that you don't get any leak strips, none of that stuff. Uh, so we got a couple of them. Four to be exact, they come two in a package and really all they are is a washer with a rubber gasket uh, mounted to the interior of them. That is what comes stock with all of your banjo bolts on your VP44, your fuel filter housing. I don't know if we will be using these, so we will keep these off to the side for a rainy day just in case we ever need them. So this last little part is just the, uh, the threads for spinning your filter onto your filter head. So this is basically going to thread up into the filter head like so, and then your filter is gonna go ahead and thread onto that and uh, that's how you get your filter on and then just like any other filter this has a little seal little gasket up around it just like an oil filter basically uh, so that seals it off to the filter head and you guys are good to go I told you guys that the setup wasn't gonna change much But that we were in fact going to delete the stock 24 valve Cummins fuel filter housing off the truck We are still gonna utilize that same spot though with just a different style filter This filter is gonna be much nicer. We're gonna get better filtration out of this one It's gonna be much easier to change it when it's time to change it But there are a couple of drawbacks to this in doing this little mod and deleting your factory fuel filter housing, you are going to lose your fuel heater and potentially your water and fuel sensor, but I've told you how you can go ahead and wire that up to still keep that. The fuel heater that is mounted to the front of your factory filter housing though, obviously is not going to mount onto this. There is no fuel heater on this. So you are gonna lose the fuel heater, but there are some options for that as well. Uh, one of those options is a sandwich heater that you can get and run with these style filters and still heat the fuel up there at that stock filter location. Your other option, and this is the better option I think, is to get a heater for your aftermarket lift pump, which in my case would be the Fast Platinum 150 and then install the heater kit into that and then you're heating the fuel back near the tank where it's actually getting drawn from and has to still be sent from that location all the way up to where your factory filter location is to make it to your VP44 and your injectors to fire your truck and let your truck run. I think it's wiser to heat the fuel back at the tank rather than up at the stock location because if you have only a heater at the stock location your fuel can still gel up back at the tank and then it's not going to make it up there to that heater at all so it's better to heat back near the tank where your lift pump is sucking the fuel from and hopes to not have it gel up if you're in a colder climate that way it can still make it up there to the vp44 and your injectors and you don't have to worry about your truck not starting or running for starters we're going to go ahead and get everything opened up so we can get it all put together and ready to go then I'm gonna get underneath the hood. We're gonna disconnect the fuel line that comes in, our fuel feed line that comes in from our Fast Platinum 150 to the stock filter housing. And then we're gonna disconnect our big line kit that goes out of the fuel filter housing to the VP44, which also has our T in it for our fuel pressure gauge. So we'll get those two lines disconnected, get the plugs undone from the water and fuel sensor and from the fuel heater. And then we should have the green light to go ahead and pull the two bolts on the top and pull that fuel filter housing right up out of there. My one concern about getting this installed right now is whether or not I'm going to be able to stretch the feed line up to the top of this filter head since it is in a different location I'm hoping that I have enough slack in my feed line from the Fast Platinum 150 to reach that. If you look at this one end here, you can see that it is all set up for an Allen key so that you can tighten it up into the filter head and hopefully not have it fall out on you. And then obviously that is the end that the filter will go on. So if you do this to your truck, make sure you're putting it in the right way so that you don't have any issues down the road. That is also the hole that your fuel is gonna come back up out of and then go through that line to the VP4 
44 injection pump on your truck. They do sell these kits on Geno's Garage for the 98.5 to 99 VP44 trucks, but not for the 2000 to 2002 trucks. But all these style filter heads are basically compatible, I think from like 89 all the way up to 2002. They should all have the same location for these two bolts and all mount right in the same location on the side of the engine. So they should work for your 2000 to 2002 trucks and uh, hopefully I'm here to show you how. You need a 5 16 Allen to tighten this up into the filter head and then your filter is literally just going to uh, thread onto this bad boy like so all the way up till she seals. Bada bing, bada boom, there you go, the new filter setup. We do have to put the water and fuel sensor in here so that we don't lose our fuel obviously, but otherwise, this thing is basically ready to install, just like that. Got the water and fuel sensor all mounted to the bottom of this filter. And then in this water and fuel sensor, you do have the drain to go ahead and drain it out. So you literally just grab it like that, push up, and it will let that fuel go. Or I guess I should say water in the fuel. And to ensure that you don't get any leaks from around where this stud is to mount the filter to, they do give you a little gasket and washer type deal or an O-ring here like you see. Uh, and you go ahead and put that on here and go ahead, screw your filter on and you should not get any leaks from this area or obviously from the outside either because like I said and showed you already, the filter is just like an oil filter with this little gasket. And we are good to go guys. So let's go get to work on getting this old stock fuel filter housing out of the truck so we can go and get this thing mounted up with any luck. We won't run into any troubles. This thing will go in like it's supposed to and we will have the truck primed, fired back up and be able to get this job completed lickety split. Before I go and install all this I am gonna pull this filter back off the filter head and lubricate this gasket a little bit just like you would an oil filter uh, you just get it a little wet with some fluid some diesel fuel and then remount it to the contact surface of the filter head so make sure you do that when you're installing these filters and they also recommend to prime this filter by pouring diesel fuel into it first before you install it just like you would an oil filter you fill it up with oil before you install it I do not have any fresh diesel on hand here at the house, so I'm gonna do it the old way, just like I would with the old 24 valve stock fuel filter when I put the new cartridge filter in, bump the key, let the lift pump run for that 20 to 30 seconds, and fill this thing up with fuel, and then I'll let it sit and kind of saturate into the filter a little bit until I think that it's fully primed, and then we will go and try and pr uh, fire up the truck at that point in time. But typically, you'd wanna fill this with diesel before installation and they say to do that because they can take a little bit of time to fully prime and get soaked with the diesel fuel so if you do do it the way of the key bump just let it sit there and soak for a little bit after it's all filled up a couple cycles of the key bump and then you should be good to start the truck and not have any issues Ten millimeter for your two bolts right here that hold the fuel filter housing on the engine. And just like that guys, this old fuel filter housing is removed from the truck and coming out. Now that we have this girl out of there, I can show you some stuff a little bit closer. So right here is your water sensor for your water and fuel light that's on the dashboard of your truck. Like I said, when I showed you the new filter that's going in, we still have that but the plugs are going to be slightly different, so we're not gonna be able to utilize that unless we splice the connections together with some new connectors, which we will down the road. This is your fuel heater right here, so we are gonna be deleting that 100%. Unfortunately, our new filter setup does not have the fuel heater, but we do have those couple options that I already discussed. We have sandwich heater option that I will show you in, um, in another video, because this video will probably be a little too long, so when 
and I give you the update as to how this new filter setup is working, I'll show you the sandwich heater option. But then there is the dreaded, uh, dreaded drain valve that you know we just put all the new O-rings on and finally got that thing to stop leaking. But we were still getting a pretty decent leak from up in here somewhere. The 98 and a half to 99 trucks actually have a slightly different design to their filter housings and they have more of a steel cap up here and their heater is up in the cap if you have a 98 and a half to 99 truck if you if you live in like a warm climate or whatever and want to delete that fuel heater they do have fuel heater block off plugs so like i said guys go on their website and check it out they have anything and everything that you would need for your truck oem factory parts and then some some upgrade stuff but just not like performance upgrade stuff for now i need to pull this fitting and this fitting here so i can hook up both my fuel lines the feed line and then the big line kit to go to the vp44 and then we will be all set and ready to go i just need to mount the new filter head to the side of the engine and things should be uh should be gravy and luckily i did have enough slack on my fuel feed line coming off the fast 150 pump to reach the top of the new filter head so i don't have to run a new fuel line or at least it appears that i don't need to i just had to undo where it was mounted to the frame couple zip ties no biggie gave me the extra slack that i should need and then i'll just crawl back down underneath there re-zip tie it after i get everything hooked up and make sure that uh there is no kinks in it where it wraps around from the fast and starts to make its forward progression up towards the new filter dripping god dang diesel fuel all over my tailgate oh well i love the smell of it we got a 17 millimeter connection down here on the bottom for the big line kit that goes to the vp44 and then i believe this one is a three quarter Oh, maybe not. Maybe it isn't. It looks like it. Yes, it is a three-quarter. There we go. They did use one of those ceiling washers on this connection here, but I'm actually going to take that off just so we have a fresh one on there. This one was just uh, protected by an O-ring. I'm actually going to peel that off as well, and I'll use another ceiling washer on this one. These are a 12 mil uh, connection here that go into the fill filter housing, and then these that connect to my Pushlock 90s are a JIC 06. This size will fit in your fill filter housings, your CP3, your VP44, all that good stuff. And yes, that size is also compatible with the 12 valve filter heads. Little side note, when you're installing one of these rubber gasket washers, actually this one does not look bad at all. I could probably reuse that. We'll keep that as a spare just in case we ever need it, but we are gonna put a new one on. But when you are installing one of these, best bet is to thread it on just like a nut. Do not try to press it down because you'll just rip that rubber gasket right out of there. What I would really recommend is just getting it started on the end there so you have enough thread showing to thread it into whatever you're putting this fitting into, and then go ahead and tighten this fitting down and let it kind of naturally do its thing. Same O-ring kit as before. That I showed you when we did the new o-rings in the drain valve on this old housing here the two that I just use are the same size they're 11 30 seconds by half by 5 64 thick so that should do the trick actually they look about the same size as what I pulled off from this fitting here um, and that thing I didn't ever get any leaks from got both of our fittings installed on the filter head like I said the 12 millimeter end goes into the filter head itself and then these are a JIC 06 connection for my 38s push lock 90s so that those can connect onto there and we should be in business once I bolt this on uh, connect up my 90s and we are good to go and you can see the shininess on the gasket on top of the filter I did lube that up a little bit with some diesel fuel and I'm gonna reinstall that right now onto the filter head and then tighten this thing up make the connections with the lines and then get this filter primed only thing I need to do a little bit different to make this 
setup work is extend my big line kit. Luckily, I did have some extra pieces of 3 8 fuel line here at the house just sitting in the garage from when I originally made this big line kit. So I am going to go ahead and slice this on these push locks right here so I can get it off of there and then press on a new piece and uh, we should be good to go and hook it back up to the VP44 and then get it hooked up to the filter head and then everything is connected, tightened down and we should be able to prime that filter and get it started. I would much rather have to extend this big line kit than have to run a whole fuel line from the FAS all the way up to that new filter we just installed. All right guys, I've got everything all hooked back up. We extended our big line kit. It has plenty of slack in it and I'll show you here in a second. I uh, just got to plug in my fuel pressure gauge right now and get that taken care of and then uh, just make sure that the wires from the old fuel heater and water and fuel sensor are kind of just out of the way and not going to get caught into anything. Real quick, here is what we're working with. We got the big line kit back attached to the VP44 injection pump there. We have the fuel pressure gauge all hooked back up and then there is our brand new 12 valve conversion filter on our 2001 24 valve Cummins truck. That's what I'm talking about. We got the feed line from the Fast 150 going in there and then we got our big line kit coming out here back to the VP44 injection pump. Far more simple design, easier to get to the lines and take care of stuff if you do have any type of leak pop up and the spin on filter is just gonna be far faster and easier to change. So there you guys go. That's what I had planned the whole time to delete the stock fuel filter housing off from the Cummins truck. I just replaced it with another Cummins stock filter housing and uh, that's that's uh, that's all I got for you. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing primed and make sure that none of our connections are leaking. That is where I'm gonna wrap this one up though. I think this video has uh, been long enough to give you guys as much information as I could on this and kind of show you what I did to make this happen. Now it is going to involve some modification if you still have a 100% stock fuel system with stock fuel lines, you're going to have to modify those lines a little bit to make this all hook up and connect on your 24 valve. If you have a truck from 2000 to 2002, if you have an aftermarket lift pump already and you already have a big line kit on your truck, then it's as simple as just connecting your old fittings from your stock fuel filter housing into this new filter head and rehooking everything back up. If you don't have a big line kit yet, it's very simple to make one. Just order yourself a couple of those 90 degree push lock fittings, a foot of that 3 8 fuel hose, and then connect it all. Very simple to do, very good thing to do for your truck. As for now, I need to get underneath the truck and zip tie that feed line back up to the frame of the truck so that it's not floating around. And then this job is 100% done for me. Remember to go and check out Gino's Garage, ginosgarage.com. They have a ton of stuff for your trucks. If you need anything, they will probably have it there on the website. Go give it a look and see what they have. And like I said, if you have any questions about anything or you just don't know uh, where it is on the website, you can't find something, call them and they will help find it for you and take care of whatever you're looking for. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me on your way out, especially for the fact that we just put 12 valve parts on the 24 valve. <laughs> Mind blown, bro. If you're stopping in for the first time, you're new here, hit that subscribe button, join the family. You know you want to. You don't want to miss out on what we have coming for the winter, for next summer. Join the family, become part of it, make it stronger, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.